Back now with our series, You First. And if you're a woman in your 30s or older and you struggle with your weight, uh, this is probably for you. Yeah, yesterday our friend Maria Shriver stopped by to show us mm. all the foods we should be eating to feed our hormones. And you guys had a ton of questions. So Maria's back along with Dr. Sarah Gottfried, who writes all about this topic in her new book, which a friend to me sent in the mail yesterday, <laughs> Women food and hormones. Hey. Hi, ladies. So hi, we keep hi. saying weight loss, weight loss, weight loss, but we should frame no, this properly. Right. Yeah. So what, what I think Sarah is really talking about is that so many women think about caloric restriction, yeah. right? Can't From have that. when they're like 12 yeah. up yeah. through even now, yeah. right? And what I think is so kind of revolutionary is you're talking about feed your body and feed your hormones the things it needs. Yeah. Don't be thinking about losing weight, thinking about feeling good right. and what's right for you, right? That's right. It's about metabolic health. It's not about diet culture. It's yeah. not about getting thinner. It's about being the right weight for, for metabolism. Yeah, yeah, for metabolism. All right, let's get, we have That's so many so questions. Smart. Okay, so let's get this first one. Okay, this is from Instagram, yeah. and here it is. It says, I am 50. Why am I always hungry even after a high-protein meal? That's a good question. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I this all, all the time. time. <laughs> I hear this all the time. You know, one of the things that happens is when you're in your 40s, into your 50s, you start to lose estrogen. Yeah. Estrogen is an appetite suppressant. Oh. Oh. So as you lose estrogen, you get hungrier. There's other hormones that get involved too, like leptin and yeah. ghrelin. Those are the hormones that tell you to put down the fork and pick up the fork. One of the best ways to deal with this is to do intermittent fasting. Oh, okay. People love that. Okay, yeah. intermittent fasting. All right, Sylvie's got a question. Uh, let's take a listen. I try to eat less, less sugar, less dairy, less gluten products, but I keep putting on weight. What should I do? That's I a feel, big yeah. one, yes! I feel yes. hard because I have that struggle myself. Yeah. I think the biggest issue is carbohydrates, especially the refined carbs, the bread, the pasta, the pizza. What we have to do is to really focus on what's the right dose of carbs for you. The How right do you dose. Know that? Well, in my book, what I do is I go through defining the carb limit for each oh. person so we can personalize this. But what I suggest is that you reduce carbs, limit them to the non-starchy vegetables, do that for four weeks, yeah. then start to add back carbs and see how your body responds. One thing she was saying to me also is to read the labels, right? Because I eat a lot of crackers. Yeah. I'm a crunch yeah, I person. Love a yeah. I love a cracker. Oh, I, love yeah. I love more than one. I love more than one cracker. Love cheese. Yeah. That's right. But you were the saying that there's good. certain crackers that actually are lower in carbohydrates than other crackers, and I was eating all the wrong crackers. Okay, well, that so, would be so, good to put and, on our... And sometimes if you don't eat carbs for a while and you eat a sandwich the next day, I feel like your weight comes right back well, exactly. on. It does, it does. So you get fluid accumulation when that happens. Yeah. And the point is to focus on net carbs. Right. So total carbs less fiber, fiber. That's, so that helps fiber. to feed the gut. Okay. okay, that's really good advice. Right. So net the next carbs. question from Sherry in Rockford, Illinois. Here's her question. She says, I drank one glass of red wine daily. Will that affect my hormonal balance so I cannot lose weight? I really would hate to give that up. One glass? Okay. One yeah. glass seems okay. So the bad news is after 40, you really have a hard time metabolizing alcohol. So what does it do? It slows down fat burning for about 24 hours oh, by 70%. Is that all alcohol? Dang, or yeah, just pretty much all well, alcohol. you suggested that what? if people, that there's some, one or two things that they can yeah, do. Yeah, what can we do? Well, okay, so there's a couple of things. One is you could swap out something fizzy and delicious, like I like CBD fizzy drinks. Oh, a mocktail? Yeah. Okay. Like a mocktail, okay. low in carbs. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can limit to two servings a week. Make those two servings really delicious because that's what's associated with a lower risk of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. That's true. So twice a week okay. we can have one glass one of wine. Glass Pretty of much. Wine. Well, I just blocked that out. All right, <laughs> next up, <laughs> Dione from Las Vegas. She wants to know this. For women who have had a hysterectomy, what foods are recommended for weight loss and to prevent hot flashes? This good is good. Yeah. So the main thing with hot flashes after a hysterectomy is to really focus on uh, getting intermittent fasting in place. So I recommend a 14 hour overnight fast. Okay. That helps with insulin. A lot of people don't realize that insulin, which is you know the thing that tells your body whether to store fat or to burn fat, insulin triggers hot flashes. So the more that you manage insulin with whole foods, lots of fiber, plenty of healthy fat, 
that helps you with hot flashes. And can you can you have coffee on the intermittent fasting? Because I kind of do that, but I have a coffee every morning. There's a debate about this. We think that if you have no calories, that doesn't count. But some of the research is done where out, where coffee actually counts as breaking the fast. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, really do, do you do intermittent fasting? I do do intermittent fasting, yeah. but I have you know, coffee. Yeah. I have and coffee do you feel good after you do that? After no, intermittent fasting? No. Not really. But I, <laughs> Unless I'm eating, but I think what this, what is also kind of groundbreaking, is that we're even having this conversation yeah. about eating for yeah. hormonal health. There's yeah. been such a debate about women's hormones. What you know, should you take bioidentical hormones? Yeah. Can you actually eat for your hormones? How do you keep yourself even? This yeah. is a new frontier yeah. in women's health, and not to be talking about just losing weight. Yeah. That's right. It's like about That's health important. and feeling good. It sounds right. great. So give up the booze and the coffee. coffee. All right. <laughs> no, don't give up the coffee. No, okay. no, you it's can't. Good for your brain health. That's oh, right. Thank you. That's right. See, Maria, we need you. Okay, well, then check out Dr. You, Dr. Gottfried's book, Women, Food, and Hormones. Head to j.com slash shop. Maria, when are you coming back? Come back next I'm week. Gonna, I've been so we happy to see you. No, we've, we've missed you so much, oh, and we, we've got to come I back soon. Here. I've gotten right. hugs since I've been here. Okay, yeah. so that means yes. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.